Oh, here we go. There we go. All right, a bass. That's just what we were looking for. You know, these guys aren't fished for that much in the wintertime. Ice anglers don't target bass that much, but they're actually very catchable through the ice. The key is finding the right habitat and lakes with a lot of bass. Let's look at a cool system for catching these fish through the ice. So probably one of the best tools you can have for finding green vegetation under the ice is an underwater camera. It doesn't take long to drop down, patrol the edge of a weed line, cut a bunch of holes, look around, drop the camera down, see if there's weeds or not, and move on. And the cool thing about it is, if there's bass there, they usually come up and check the camera out. They're a very curious fish and they'll come right up and look at it. If there's a school, you'll see two or three of them. And I mean, I've even had the fish come up and actually grab the camera head and eat it. So they're not afraid of the camera. So that's one thing that's neat is you can find these fish pretty easily with a camera. Done. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Nice green weeds and two bass staring at the camera. That's all I needed to see. Now the next step is to get after them. So a lot of times when you find these bass, they're often in pretty good sized schools in these weed beds and they move around a lot. So you can fish them with one line and a little uh, jig, tungsten jig and a plastic like I got here. But if you really want to cover some ground, I always like to throw down a flag, a nice tip up here with a shiner minnow. Bass, for some reason, these bass can't resist shiner. So a nice fluorocarbon leader with a small hook and a small shiner. So this way you put the shiner down where you saw the fish and then you move around with your jigging rod. Kind of a one-two punch approach here to catching these guys. The one thing that the camera is very helpful on is telling you how high the weeds are and that's pretty important for setting these flags or jigging above the weeds is the height of the weeds and the thickness of the weeds. So you don't want to put your line down a hole where the weeds are so thick that your bait's going to get tangled up or you're going to get stuck jigging. You find the hole where the fish are and how high the weeds are and just put your uh, bait about a foot above the weed tops and that way you're not getting fouled in weeds. So now I got the flag set up and I'm going to move about 10 yards away from it and just to cover some water because these fish move around a lot. And with this uh, jig tungsten and plastic, I'm using it on a rod with a spring bobber. And you might think that's sort of weird for bass, but you know, watching them a lot like I have on cameras, you'd be surprised at how light bass bite. I mean, they come right up to your jig, get an inch away, their nose an inch away from your bait, and they just actually open their mouth sometimes and suck it in so they're they're, they can actually bite lighter than like a bluegill or a crappie. So a spring bobber does actually help out when you're fishing for these things. So we're just going to take this tungsten jig and hop around and watch our flag and see what we can catch. Oh, all right. Oh, there he is. Well, that didn't take long. Doesn't feel like too bad a fish either. Oh, there, yep, nice bass. You know, I've been fishing for bass for quite a few years now. It's just a lot of fun, but not everybody does it. I guess I'd say it's kind of like fishing for, for sunfish, but on a bigger scale.